Okay, in this video, I wanna talk if rare tournaments are gonna to become a thing, this is gonna be more common. Currently, we got a tournament that is rare only for Dragon. I wanted to make a video talking about the rares that I think would be good overall, over uh, across multiple dungeons. So I have a list here that I wanted to go through and kind of discuss my thought process. So main thing I wanted to talk about was the how the affinities work, and I was kind of looking at how to maximize which characters you use based on affinity. When it comes to the the most common usage of these dungeons is going to be mainly dragon, then about 30%, you know, like 40% uh, fire knight, and then rest of it, and then spiders, I kind of consider it separately. But when it comes to the two dungeons gear wise, I like farming dragon mostly for speed, stuff like that, speed and lifesteal. And then fire knight has a lot of interesting uses that are more niche, but should still be farmed. It does take longer to clear this dungeon, so definitely focus all your resources on Dragon first for a long time. When you're ready to go for Fire Knight, that's definitely a good option as well. Then Spider too. So point being, Spider Spider is a little different because it takes so many Spider-specific characters for this. But the, the thing I wanted to point out was the affinity. So we have a Spirit Affinity for Spider 20. We have Blue Affinity for Dragon. And then we have red affinity for Fire Knight. So the main ones out of these two dungeons, I was trying to look at what is the most effective affinity for if you're just trying to farm dragons and Fire Knight. And then for, for what I was seeing here is since this is red, I would recommend trying. I was trying to find as many good force characters because that would mean they would be a they would be even affinity here in fire knight then they would be positive affinity in dragon then they can also be used as an off affinity tank for spider so that's why i was looking for force characters and then but there's really not that many options when it comes to either a force tank or a force damage dealer even though i wouldn't really necessarily want a force damage dealer i couldn't really find any that seemed to be good champions but for the force force um character that would have a positive affinity or a neutral affinity here, positive in dragon and a negative in spider would be Grinner. So I think Grinner, Grinner is the one after kind of looking at the affinities, that was the one character I saw that I think is really good. That also takes advantage of that kind of looking at the dungeons that way. And so the reason being good tank, just a super good kit, especially for rare, amazing base speed. And then yeah, his kit's really cool, so let's read that. So, attacks when an enemy has a 25% chance of placing a 50% increased attack buff on all allies. Then also has attacks all enemies, has a 20% chance of removing one random buff from the, each target. That goes up to 50%. So, the, I, I already already a very good kit. And then lastly, has a super good ability, especially in the early to mid game when you don't have a reser yet. This is a great character to pull for that, which is rev revives an ally with 50% HP, places a shield buff on the revived champion for two turns equal to, to 25% or 20% of their max HP on a four turn cooldown, which, which is awesome. That's like a legitimately a good character for the early game, early to mid game. And this would be a good carry for all those dungeons mentioned above. So that's first character on the list. And then next we got Okay, and then War Maiden here. This is the other one. Support character, Force Affinity as well. So we get that spread there. And then uh, the main reason why you're taking her is going to be this, which is a win booked 100% chance of placing a decreased defense debuff for two turns. Cool thing about her too is that she's farmable. So very popular character, very good. It's definitely going to be a character that I would look into if you don't have this type of effect. There is better... Characters out there, like if you pulled Madame Saris, or if you've pulled, or if you, you did the battle pass and then got Stagnite, but for rares specifically, if you're if you're locked into only using rares, I would uh, give her a look. And then next, I just want to clear some of the obvious ones that are going to cover a lot of dungeons. It's going to be first one is going to be Apothecary. This character very good, you know, speed boost, turn meter fill. And then also attacks three times, so very good on Fire Knight. And then a heal two also has a pretty good aura for dungeons. A good base speed as well. And then the other obvious one is going to be Cold Heart here. So attacks four times, great on Fire Knight. 
does max HP damage good on all bosses, especially Fire Knight and especially Spider. So great character. People are definitely wanting her. Covered a lot in a lot of videos. We just want to briefly go over them because they're obviously very good. And they have the cool thing also about them too is that they're used in a variety of dungeons. You're not pigeonholing yourself into, oh, this is just my dragon character or something like that. And then next I wanted to talk about is Gnarlhorn. So Gnarlhorn is right here. Very unique kit, really good carry, uh, spirit affinity. So going to be good positive affinity for Fire Knight. Going to be negative affinity for Dragon, which actually could you be used in your favor. I like these kind of tank characters being negative affinity. May draw aggro towards that character, especially if you're trying to keep squishier characters alive, uh, taking advantage of that mechanic there. And then he's just very his kit is also very based on trying to be the one that wants to get attacked. You got this move here, attacks one enemy, damage increases according to how much HP this, this champion has lost. This attack cannot be strong, critical, or a weak hit. So if you're going to be taking him in Dragon, he can't weak hit on his A1, and he's going to get stronger as he gets weaker, which is his going to be his purpose is to try to soak up as much damage as possible. It is a two here, which is places a provoke debuff on all enemies for one turn, places a 30% increased defense buff on the champion for two turns. So if you don't have like a team wide defense up, he brings at least the weak version of it and provoke for like a we provoke on a three turn cooldown when booked, which is great. You don't have to waste books trying to get it to 100% provoke chance. It's just an awesome ability. And then lastly, Places an unkillable buff on this champion for two turns on a three turn cooldown, which is awesome for clan boss if you're trying to do an unkillable team for surviving, like cheesing the spider. Uh, like it just in general, if you want to survive before a heal comes through, just an awesome ability that is very versatile for dungeons and clan boss. Okay, and then next on the list, I want to talk about uh, Grappler. So Grappler here, very uh, pretty cool character, another spirit champion, which he has attacks two times at random, has a 15% chance of placing a 15% weaken debuff for two turns, and then it actually goes up to a 25% chance. So you get a weaker, the weak version of weaken for uh, two turns on a 25% chance, and then and then the main reason why I wanted to bring him up is because he has this reflect damage buff on all uh, on all allies. So he, not only is he giving a shield equal to 20 25% buffed up to 40% when you actually book it. He's also providing the reflect damage buff on all allies, which is going to be great for Fire Knight. When the, the boss hits, you reflect damage, it immediately takes up five points of the shield. So always be looking out for AOE reflect damage uh, for the Fire Knight if you're having trouble there. And then another character, there's a lot of good rares in the Skinwalker faction. And then lastly... Like, uh, so Fleshmonger, people talk about me personally. I, I think he's all right. I, I do want to mention him because people have talked about him. Reason why I don't like him is because he's, his effects are good for Fire Knight, but he's a blue character. So he, you're, the best part of his kit is something that's effective in the Fire Knight, but he's off affinity and he's an attack dealer. If he was off of, if he was good in Fire Knight and he was off affinity, but he was like a support style character. Cool. Like I'm told, or like a defense based or HP based, I'd be all for it. But when you're an attack based character, you're already squishy, and then you're gonna go off affinity. He's just gonna die. But his kit though is text one enemy three times, great for Fire Knight. And then he has this here where he's increasing attack by 25%, increasing crit rate by 25 or by 15% on this champion. So like, I don't even really like that too much. He's just helping himself out when he's already going to be potentially hitting weak a whole bunch and then grants an extra turn. Then his extra turn is attacks all enemies has a 50% chance of placing a 20 or a 60% decreased defense buff for two turns. It goes only, it only goes up to 75%. So Warbane's just significantly better for this because you're going to be mainly taking her in the same area. So you're going to be taking War Maiden in Fire Knight, which she has even affinity, and then she gains positive affinity in Dragon. The, I guess you could argue this guy would be okay for Spider, but it's never 100%, so, uh, which I don't like. So I, I can't find a justification to, to, get, to get this guy all the way up, but, but if 
But if you don't have anyone better and you're trying to fulfill this role, I understand it. It's just not going to be 100%. And then also, Greybeard, good character. I'm, I'm a big fan of Provoke. I use Provoke in Arena. I use Provoke in any kind of content that I need characters to survive. So if, for where I'm at in the game, that would be Faction Wars, which is attacks when enemies, has a 50% chance of placing a Provoke debuff for one turn, ends up going to a 75% chance when booked on an A1. That's really good. Then he has this A2 here, which is attacks all enemies, has a 25% chance of placing a freeze debuff for one turn. So you could put this guy in like a provoke set, then he's not only getting provoke on his A1, he's getting provoke on his A2 and a freeze potentially with a good percentage chance, especially when booked on a three turn cooldown, very good ability for uh, CC. And then lastly, he has this, places a shield buff on the champion for two turns, has a 100% chance when booked of placing a counterattack buff on the champion for two turns, the value of the shield is propor propor <laughs> the value of the shield is proportional to defense, this buff cannot be removed. So very good ability on a four turn cooldown and then a very good aura of 30% in dungeons. So just overall, very good character, very good carry to help you survive in multiple types of dungeons. So this is a character that is good in dragon, but can still be good in fire Knight as an off affinity character because you want him to get attacked. You, you want he, his whole goal is to freeze and provoke and stuff like that. So the fact that he's off affinity and he has a good aura is going to give him a lot of threat because he's going to be placed in your leadership spot and he's going to be off affinity. So very, very good. It's like you're, you're baiting them into attacking him. So, all right. So next on the list, next on the list, we got, Ooh, this, this is a very good one. I'm a big fan of this character, which is Crimson Helm. So you're getting positive affinity for fire Knight. You're getting attacks three times at random and then the sleep does, doesn't really matter, but I, I'm, I'm sure it could be okay in other like uh, on waves and stuff and then you're also getting this too which is a hundred percent chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 50 percent fills this champion's turn meter equal to the amount of the target loses so very good ability for it, the whole kit is a very good for a rare version of someone that can address the fire knight so you're getting the three hit you're getting the turn meter reduction hopefully it lands when the shield has already been dropped and then lastly I've seen this hit very hard, which it, this is another thing that's also very good for the Fire Knight, which is heal reduction. So attacks all enemies has a 100% chance of placing a 50% heal reduction debuff for one turn, which, you know, ideally you'd be 100% if you're running her with cold heart, you're, you're going to be wanting the 100% version of this. But, you know, 50% is better than nothing, especially when you're combining a kit with three hit on on a one, which is great for Fire Knight. And then also the turn meter reduction, which is great for Fire Knight. So and you're getting a positive affinity. So a very good character for Fire Knight. Also, I get she, she just hits really hard. So is going to be good against the waves early. So probably should have been in my obvious part uh, is going to be Frozen Banshee here. Frozen Banshee is a fantastic character for clan boss mainly, but could be used as a character so the dragon is, is very susceptible to poison damage as a way of killing it. And she's very good at applying poison. So if you don't have a character that can, if you're having trouble killing the dragon, like you can get through to dragon, but you just need to kill it. This would be a good character for that purpose, because once you get her to the dragon, she's going to apply so many poisons. And then the cool thing, if you, if you don't know, when the dragon is about to throw his fire out, he has that purple bar, the poisons tick before it procs. So if you have a ton of poisons and it's about to stun your whole team, if you have enough poisons on there, it's going to tick off all that health and then it will break that shield or whatever portion, that threshold, and then he won't stun your team. So uh, poisons are a very good strategy for beating the dragon. Okay, so then we got her. And then I was trying to, I was trying to find an... AOE, well, I was trying to find a, because, oh, here, here's another character I should, I should talk about, I should talk, uh, but people know it's going to be Kale. Kale's a very good rare for not only for dungeons, but for clan boss as well, because he's, and, and for arena, because he, he does a lot of damage. So he's applying poisons on his A1, he attacks all enemies, hits very hard, this is a high modifier move, it, it, Makes it easy, especially in the early game, because he's giving himself more crit rate, which is great. I remember when I was first starting to play, having 100% crit rate was very tough for the gear I had. 
And then having character, I really looked forward to getting characters that had built in crit rate, like cold heart, for example, she has 30% built into that move. He has 15% based on into this move. So I really like that, especially on the early side of early to mid game. And then lastly, he has this four times a random applies poison. So this will be good against dragon, good against all right, well, that's going to do it for my list. I do not like this. In my opinion, these style of tournaments should be uh, on a modifier based system where you can still use your normal characters, but rares are going to get like a 10x modifier points wise. So you're incentivized to use rares, but not your entire team be rare focused. I hope they do that in the future with epics and legendaries if they're going to be doing a tournament of this style. So, well, you guys have a good one. Also, UFC's back, baby. We got a dope card. My picks, my picks for the main and co-main are going to be Tony Ferguson and Dominic Cruz. So let me know in the comments below who you think is going to win UFC if you follow that stuff. And you guys have a good one. Peace.